Hey guys, so today I'm going to work on my 3D printer. Uh, I've been working on these Z-axis uh, brackets for a while now. So what I'm going to do if I just print them out, and I'll put the time lapse in ahead of this. Get that popped off pretty good. Oh, that popped off really good. Sweet. Uh, I did have to start using uh, glue sticks since I started uh, printing at a higher temperature which is just fine. It's luckily the one I got is a washable school glue and it seems to be working just fine. It's kind of a purple looking color but uh, it works really nice on it. Uh, as you can see I'm still getting some lines even though I turned up the temperature. So this time what I did is I used a different slicer. I used Cura. So I'm giving it a shot to see how that worked out. And it seemed like the support material is a little bit different. I'm hoping it comes off easier than the ones in the past. Now if I could just find my little screwdriver bits. There we go. Pull the support material out. all this stuff up afterward. This is probably my fifth attempt at videoing this because every time I start to assemble it I find out that I didn't size the area for the nut the right size. I picked up the M8 nuts from Home Depot and let's see if they're close at all to fitting. Still not quite right. I'm trying to see if there's anything I can do to salvage this piece. I'm taking this little file that came with the printer. I did set uh, Cure to do a, a 125% First layer. It's supposed to give better adhesion to the bed. It's still not quite right, but let me see if I can press this one in. Otherwise, I'll back to the drawing board again. This will be another video that never gets seen by, <laughs> by anybody. <laughs> so, take a pair of pliers. I'm just going to give, it, try to press it in lightly. Um, I've had success with one of them in the past, and then the other one completely broke. So, eh, drop that nut. Try pressing this one in. Don't want to do it directly over the glass bed. In fact, I'm just going to move it out of the way right now. I'd like to do this on camera if it actually works. I did design the part in uh, Tinkercad. And if this all pans out, and it actually helps with the lines on my print, I plan on uh, uploading it to Thingiverse. And if I do, I'll put the link in the video description. But at the moment, uh, is it starting to go? I'm not trying to force it, I'm just trying to coax it in. Okay, it doesn't look completely flush. Let me even it out. That looks flush to me. It's a little bit of a bulge there, so I'll have to resize it again. But for now, I'm going to try it. If I can get the <clears throat> this other nut in, then I'm going to try it. I know that really didn't sound right at all, but <laughs> let's see. That's not bad at all. Okay, so here's what I've got planned. If everything goes to plan here, I'm going to take and take off these couplers. I did order a new set of couplers. Uh, a little bit different design, so hopefully it'll, it'll be a little bit straighter. 
and so I'm going to put those on and if it all works out I'll put those in the video description as well if not like I said nobody will ever see this video <laughs> Okay, so I'm still working on it. I got the one side cleaned up and I'll show you how I did it. Get my arm out of your way here. Okay, so I want to let go of that, how it's just hanging on that rod. And I think that's where I'm getting the noises. So I'll wipe off all the grease that I put on it, try to make it look pretty again. So I was at Home Depot the other day over in the plumbing section next to uh, where they have the PVC pipe. And they have this little tool, it's by HDX, and it's meant for uh, cleaning off uh, PVC pipe when you cut it. And I just picked it up because I figured that might help. And it's coming in pretty handy. It's going to give it a little bit of a taper at the top and the bottom because of the way the blade is shaped. But it's allowing me to get right where the grease was left over and the grooves so I know I've I've got that cleaned out some try to go the same direction if I can one more pass let's see how that fits still a little tight so give it one more once over with this. Still a little bit on the very end of it. Sorry, I'm doing some of this off off camera, but a whole lot smoother. There's still no wiggle to it, so it should be fine. Okay, I'm going to put the thing back together and then I'll get right back with you.
Hey, I'm back. <laughs> what happened to all the video? Well, I took and I uh, had to do some stuff. I had to yell, I had to scream, I had to throw things, have a temper tantrum, and just overall just be mean. <laughs> so I ended up putting the old brackets, the old uh, uh, couplers back on it. Turns out G Tech, whenever they sent me all the nuts and bolts and everything for this, there was a ton of these 22s. I took one of those, put it through the one that was uh, stripping that was on this side, and took a pair of uh, wire cutters and scored it, and then took the pliers and broke off the rest of it so it wouldn't be hitting the, the other rod, you know, hitting the rod as it spun around. So, got those put back on. Everything's down to the level where now it touches the Z, the Z end stop without bottoming out. So what I'm going to do now is go back to my ruler and I want to, yeah, of course it's not going to do that. I got to re readjust everything. So at the moment, this is it. Take it right to 22, uh, 22 centimeters. Uh, same thing on this side. I'm going to take it right to 22 centimeters. Good enough. So that will give me my baseline. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and do the auto home. Let's see where that brings us. Actually before I do auto home, before I go any further I do want to go down to move axis one millimeter, we're going to go Z, nope, why did it go to extruder? Move Z, I'm going to run it up to about 80, I'm going to pause for a moment, then I'm going to run it back down to zero, and it should bottom back it down. And so far, these couplers are straighter than my brand new ones, so brand new ones are they're not worth even sending back. I'll end up throwing those in the trash because they are not worth it. Once again, as you can see, I don't know if you can or not, but this part here is just rock solid. It's not moving at all. While the rest of this, you can see the brackets are wiggling back and forth, and that's the whole reason for these brackets. And whenever I uh, get everything up running, I'll probably print these brackets one more time and later on switch them out. I'm not going to force anybody to watch me do that again. <laughs> okay, so it has not lost any steps, nothing's sticking, everything's looking like it's moving fluidly, which is what I was hoping for by doing this. So what I'll end up doing, I'll end up redesign, you know, go back to these brackets one more time after I print it with this printer and see if I need to resize some stuff and I'll get it all straightened out and I'll put it up on Thingiverse later on. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead, we're going to go to prepare, we're going to auto home one more time. going to raise it off the end stop. It's going to bring it back down onto the end stop. Okay. Now, I'm going to go to disable steppers. So what we're going to need now is a piece of paper. A piece of typing paper, printer paper, whatever you got, whatever they call it now. It's a 20 pound paper, I believe. Right off the bat, I want to make sure that's not bumping that glass. Now, hear that? it is touching the glass. So, what we're going to do, I don't feel like messing with this right now, I'm just going to play with the print bed. It's going to be a lot easier. So I'm going to take my paper, bump it up against the extruder. Raise it, take and lower the print bed just a hair. And before you do this, you want to make sure that your nozzle doesn't have any plastic hanging from the end of it. And you're just going to want to do it until the paper just has 
very slight drag like right there just barely slides just barely has any slack to it or uh, drag to it once again on this side we got the same thing bring this in just a hair so I can get to the that part take and lower the print bed and you want to remove your your allen wrench from it because even just the weight of the allen wrench sitting on it changes how it moves believe it or not okay so right there we, we just have very light slot uh, just a little, little bit, little bit of drag to it. Okay. So what I do is I bring the print bed forward, but not all the way forward. I leave it so I can come in from behind. Get it set up in there, and then we're going to lower this print bed just a hair. Get back up. See if I just taking that driver off of it. It uh, allowed it to come up just a hair. And we just. Every time you adjust it, you want to take your the driver off of it. Okay, and tighten that down. Very light drag. Bring it over here. Light drag. Right in the middle, we got light drag. Right there, you can hear it. Just barely any drag to it. And no matter what surface you print on, nothing is 100% even. So that's the reason why your first layer height is always going to be a little bit, a little bit more than the rest of it. Okay, so we are pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and go to prepare. We're going to auto home again. Okay, let's print something, shall we? Let's go to prepare. We're going to preheat for PLA. And we'll put that again. Go down to install SD card. Let it install. Did I bring my SD card? No, I didn't bring my SD card out. Ah! Okay, I'm going to grab my SD card. I got a fan shot I'm going to print up here. Might as well do it in the same video or nothing else. You know what? I'm just going to do it on a separate video. I'm not going to make you make this video any longer than it is already. But uh, expect another video to be coming out very soon. I'm going to go ahead and start that to printing, and then we'll see what the what the results are. I'll go ahead and I'll add the results onto this video, but the actual print of the fan shot will be on the on the separate video. I'll be back with you guys in just a moment. Okay, guys, let's take a look at the reason for these brackets. I'm going to go to my printer, I'm going to go to prepare, I'm going to tell it to move axis, I'm going to go one millimeter increments, I'm going to move the z-axis. So I'm going to run it up and watch how that wobbles. Before, all that movement was transferred directly to that carriage. And now, it's all, that bracket allows it to just wiggle underneath and it doesn't uh, transfer to the print. It allows this linear bearing over here to keep everything rock solid when it comes to that gantry portion of it. And everything else can wiggle all at once and it's not going to hurt nothing. And what's funny is I didn't notice near that much wobble whenever I had the solid connections, you know, this, the solid nuts. When these were installed and tightened up with the four screws, it was a rigid connection. So any wobble at all transferred to that, that bracket. So these, these new anti-wobble brackets really helped out a lot. So I'm going to upload the, video, the, the file to the Thingiverse uh, website shortly. And uh, when I do, I'll be sure to put that in the video description where to find it in case you're interested in printing for this particular printer. I don't know if it'll fit any other printer, but I know it fits this one perfect. But 
other than that, I think that's going to do it. Oh yeah, let's take a look at what happened with these prints over here. That's my newest print. This is the one from before. Let me get them lined up here and I'll get them to where the camera can see it. Okay, see the lines? That's what every print I had was getting. Now take a look at that. Smoothed it right out. These brackets were the best thing I ever did to this printer. So there we have it. It definitely works. So if you like my video, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.